Today we're going to do two things. First of all, expertising Boudicca Prime on my restart account. I'm so freaking hyped. Finally, I have a great top tier commander to pair with Esong. Or is it a top tier pairing? I have been hearing a ton of complaints that people are using Boudicca Prime and getting wrecked. So the second thing we're going to do is address that concern. Is Boudicca Prime too squishy? And what are all the things you can do to make her more survivable in the open field? Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And it's no secret that I have been so amped up to Expertise Boudicca, not once, but twice, on my main account and my restart account. And I've just been spinning the wheel to get as much value as I can, but we're about to enter into KVK. In fact, I've got Eva the Crusade. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I've got over 1,600 videos dedicated to helping make you a better player in Rise of Kingdoms, and I'm about to enter KVK with, I think, the new crystal technology. So subscribe, you're not going to want to miss that. But let's get back to the task at hand, and let's go start by expertising Boudicca Prime, because even though I have heard these complaints that Boudicca Prime is too squishy, I don't think that that's true at all, but I understand the concern, and we're going to go completely address it. So step one, universal sculptures, flip them over to Boudicca Prime. Let's freaking go. 75, 75, 80, and then 80 for the final four skills on a legendary commander. And don't forget to tap the expertise skill because if you don't, then you don't actually have it unlocked. And yes, I actually got rallied in KVK season. I don't know what it was. My first time doing Strife of the Eight. And uh, yeah, they had a commander of the expertise not unlocked. It was actually just completely ridiculous. Here we go. The expertise skill is really good on Boudicca Prime. From what I understand, this is increasing your normal attack damage by 10% with archers. And then you have a 80% chance to dispel control effects, which the most important thing you need to know is she'll self-clear silences off of herself. Th this is insane. I use self too many times there. But she clears silence debuffs. That includes, well, primarily Guan Yu doing a silence, but also sometimes people pair her with Artemisia, and she will clear that silence as well before either of them have had even one turn of impact. It instantly cleared before it even applies, which is insane. But anyways, the expertise skill. We've done it, baby. This commander is awesome. I am completely undeterred by the concern that people have had that maybe she's too squishy. And allow me to explain to you, first of all, why it is that it feels that way. And second of all, all of the things you can do about it. We're going to go over the commanders you could use that will be more tanky. We're going to go over the most important thing, I think, which is optimizing your equipment. And spoiler alert, I'm close but not quite there yet. Uh, and then we'll even go over a few other extra options to make this march even more survivable. But let's start with, is Boudicca Prime too squishy? I remember very vividly that every one of the first people who invested in XY felt like he was too squishy. You may remember back in the day that other content creators even said, I regret making this investment. It feels like they are way too squishy. And this was, I think, Legend Ronnie at the time who was feeling this that it just wasn't a good investment compared to what he could do with other commanders, and the trades were really bad. This phenomena happens every time a new commander is released to the game, which is that everybody realizes how good they are and focuses them out. The problem is not that XY was ever a bad commander. It is not that Boudicca Prime is a bad commander. It is that they are so good and so new that everyone is making them a priority target. And it's understandable her debuff is god tier. 35% more skill damage taken by the target is exactly the sort of debuff that you wanted in the meta that we live in today, which is very, very high skill damage. So with that said, I don't think that Boudicca Prime is too squishy. However, I think she's getting focused a lot. And so there are things that you can do about that. So let's start by talking about what defensive capabilities she has, and we'll realize immediately where her weakness is. Because although she does give you defense, once she gets below 80% of troops remaining, and although, do, she, although she does have some sustain, okay, she will give you a little bit of healing to bring troops back, 
And she does even reduce the skill damage you take by 25%. This is nice. She's missing health. She is missing health, and she only has a small amount of march speed. Only 10% march speed. This is very important. So the problem is that most people are going to take their Boudicca Prime and pair with Esong. That is what I'm doing. This is exactly what I'm doing, and I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever. I couldn't be more happy that this is the pair that I'm ultimately going to go and make because I have the Esong, and I needed something good to pair him with, and there's no better commander in my opinion, if you're only picking one, then Boudica Prime, okay? Still feel that way, slam dunk. However, Isong only has 10% defense. That's literally the only defensive capability he has. It's not even in his base kit, by the way. That comes from his Museum Relic, available only in KVK Season 4 and beyond, which means that the two together have a huge health deficiency. However, if you were looking at other pairings that people... That, that don't have stacked accounts, might have access to. What else could you do besides the Esong? And there are a couple options that technically might be a little more tanky. One of those options might surprise you, and that is going to be Mehmed. His Relic gives a lot of health, and that health is really good. He also boosts skill damage. So together, you're actually getting a more tanky march, especially with the extra troops, uh, than if you're using the Esong. Weird. But true. Also, if you wanted, you could use El Cid. Weirdly enough, he has, what is it, 20% of defense over here and 5% of defense over here. A lot of march speed, 15%, and 25% march speed when you get low. So you actually could get away from a bad situation. I'm not saying I think this is a great combo. I'm saying if you really wanted to try to make Boudicca Prime more tanky, if you were an average, you know, I just made it to Season of Conquest and I've been just getting my gold keys and he's not even expertise, but I might try it sort of a thing, okay? Th these are some of the options that would be available to you. The last one that would be available to a non-stacked, like decked out account might be some amount of skills onto Thutmos. And Thutmos doesn't even have all that much to help you out here either. They've got 10% march speed. It's not all that much. 10% defense. I mean, I guess you've got more march speed than your Esong. And the only saving grace with a Thutmose as an alternative is that if we look at his Relic, he actually gives you, I think, a bunch of health. 15% health, 15% attack for your archers. If you wanted, those are things that you could look to. I personally have no intention to use anything but Boudicca Prime Esong. And I will be battling in about, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks anyways. You'll get to see when I use the Boudicca Prime with Esong. So subscribe already if you haven't. But if you had an absolutely stacked account and you were like, bro, this Boudicca Prime Esong thing is just not working for me, there are a bunch of other options. Commanders on my restart project that I haven't messed around with because I just don't think they're that important for this account yet would be a commander like Honda Tarakatsu, my number one pick. You want to improve Boudicca's mobility and tankiness, does great damage, Honda Tadakatsu would be my number one pick. I also really like Artemisia, although she lacks in March speed. The synergy with her sort of self-silence effect, not even applying the silence, but she still gets the benefit of the 50% damage because of Boudicca Prime's expertise, is really good. And this pairing works because, well, you've got 40% of defensive stats here. That's 20% defense, 20% health. I could definitely support that. Alternatively, if you wanted to keep Gilgamesh in your rotation, and it seems like a lot of top-tier players from 1960 in the KVK we've been spectating, Card will be up in the top, um, they are using a lot of Gilgamesh in the field. He does have health, but no march speed, and he does reduce the normal attack damage you take. That would make Boudicca Prime more tanky. I think the thing that more commonly people have been asking about, though, is Ramses. This works well for making the march really tanky. I don't think it adds much to your ball overall and your effectiveness in combat other than making your Boudicca Prime more survivable. And if that's what you were trying to optimize, then Ramses can do that well. Uh, a couple other options that I'll mention, but very few people would have them. Of course, trying to pair with Henry would do well for you. Uh, Henry is actually pretty tanky. I mean, he reduces the skill damage that you take, He's got March Speed without reviewing his entire kit. I think he's solid, but very few people will even have them except some rally leads. 
And of course, last but not least, is Nebu. The reason I didn't mention him sooner is that you probably, if you have Nebu, are using two Archer Marches anyways. And so if you're going to use two Archer Marches, you're going to use a Nebu primary, probably, and you're going to use the Boudicca Prime primary. But if you were making just one March, sure, I mean, the Nebu's solid, 30% defense, and uh, what is it, 15% March speed. But there's still one problem. We haven't addressed the missing health. N almost none of these combos bring more health to your march, and that is an issue. So what are the ways that you can get some more health onto your Boudicca Prime march? And if you were noticing you're getting focused a lot, what could you do about it? Well, I have often advocated that this is a great set to aim for. Going for the four epic pieces of the Revival set, it's really good. Going for the health boots... And of course, the defense on your weapon, the Golden Age. But I think equipment is our best opportunity to emphasize defensive stats on a Boudicca Prime pairing. And there's a couple ways you can do this. First, I'll talk about the budget way to go, because I think a lot of people will be really interested in that. And then I'll go with the legendary route, which I think is important to understand as an end state that you might one day shoot for, especially because now you do want to put Iconics onto equipment, Eventually, you'll have a lot of Iconics. It'll take us all a while to get there. But anyways, let's start with the blue equipment. The first optimization you could make is instead of going for the Revival Plate, which gives you attack, and going for the Revival Gauntlets, which also gives you a small amount of attack. And this is important. Weirdly enough, these Gauntlets split their stats across a lot of things. So instead of giving a lot of stats for an Epic, it's actually a low amount of stats for archers specifically, which is weird. It makes up for it by being a set bonus. So the four-piece bonus is 3% defense. That's nice. But the optimization I will first give you on a budget is to instead not make that chess piece at the epic tier and just stay with the blue piece. Commander's heavy armor when talented is 8% health. Okay, you wanted tankiness. Let's go. You're sacrificing the set bonus, 3% defense, to instead have 8% health. And, of course, this is way less materials. The other piece that you then need to get a look at is the gloves. Now, weirdly, there's not a lot you could do with the gloves um, because at the blue tier, you still have attack, okay? But if you get the talent on this, I believe it's 5.5% attack. Like, you're not actually losing much attack compared to what you had, right? Talented, the gloves were giving 6%. I think they had base 4.5. This has base 4 Okay, that's not so bad. So I think your budget point would be to go for the blue gloves, Saint Song. Uh, I guess technically, if you wanted to make a, just a big sacrifice to stats, you could go for the leather gloves, but that feels like a pretty big sacrifice. I, I guess you could consider it. It's even fewer materials, but that's the budget option to get some more defensive stats onto your archers. But I think the better long-term play is actually two options. I'll give you two ways to do this. The way that I think is the sort of best of the best, if you had access to it, would be, first of all, to go in and make the Hydra's Blast KVK Bow. And, okay, I get that most people aren't going to make this, or that it would take prohibitively long. Don't worry, I will give you an alternative that doesn't have this. But this is what I will probably do personally, is I will make the Hydra's Blast, which is just straight up more defense than I have today, and to get more health onto the march, we go and we get a look at the two-piece bonus from the Archer set. The pieces that I would go for are the chest, which has health, which is really nice, and the gloves, which unfortunately has attack, but at least it's a base amount of attack is like way higher than what you had on Revival anyways. And the two-piece bonus is unfortunately more attack. But still, at least you're getting a lot of stats and you're moving some amount of health onto the march. The other approach that's going to be a good bit easier is to say, bro, I don't like I don't have materials for that. There, there's an incremental way you could go, and it's probably a lot easier for most people. The Milky Way is a really, really, really good pattern that's even available right now from Lucerne Scrolls. If you went for the Milky Way, it's got more health anyways than the Archer set piece does by 1%. A lot of people don't notice that. So you go for the Milky Way, you start there. If you had to use blue gloves for a while, you use some blue gloves for a while, whatever. But you go for the health on the Milky Way. When you're ready, then you upgrade 
your weapon and your gloves to be the set archer weapon and the set archer gloves. That gives you a little more defense, and then also you're getting the 3% attack, which is really, really nice. There's a longer debate that could be made about how worthy it is to invest in the KVK bow versus the Dragon's Breath set, because the whole set gives you a lot of health at the top end of things. But that's also, it's so many materials and it's so unapproachable for most people. I think for most people and for my restart account in particular, I will probably when I enter KVK, just go make the KVK bow. And like, boom, I just have a bunch of defense. Like it's just straight up more stats and a lot more stats. Um, and maybe I'll do some math and see, maybe it's just more stats per material and maybe more stats in the right direction to do the health set piece and the set gloves. I'll figure that out as well, but the point still stands. Those are your best optimizations to get some defensive capability onto the commander. The final exception to that is going to be your accessory choices. And with your accessories, the best option I think you have is going to be a Delane's Amulet. Reduce the counterattack damage that you take. It's not going to help you when you're getting completely surrounded, but at least it'll keep you a little bit more healthy when you're just moving around the field doing your regular open field fighting. I do not think that going for a Skolas' Lucky Coin is a good play. I think that is only really optimal for garrisoning an Ark of Osiris in particular because you just want your garrison to live and often you don't even want to kill the Swarmers. You just want them to get low health and stay there for a while. And then if you wanted to really push the boundaries, I think that the best accessories for a Boudicca Prime are going to be a Horn to generate more rage to use your active skill more and also a Ring of Doom. And when you put an Iconic onto an accessory, it has some base health. So if you wanted to go a step further and give her just a little bit more tankiness, if you have your legendary accessories on her and you put Iconics on those, that would give her more base health. Also, at the legendary tier, the chest piece gives base defense stat. So that's a little bit of tankiness. So if you went for either the Milky Way or you go for the set piece, I think it would be extremely reasonable to drop an Iconic onto that piece for the extra Archer base defense. It's small amounts of improvements, but all together they really do add up to make the march ever so slightly more tanky. The last thing I do want to mention about Iconics, however, is to be very careful. Uh, for a lot of players, you don't want to split your Iconics across many different troop types. That doesn't position you well if you ever needed to counter rally or garrison or whatever the situation might be where it would benefit you to really have just like one troop type that you've moved all in on. So for me, I'm actually not wearing the set right now, but I have moved sort of all in on an infantry based set, focusing first on the accessories uh, because I mean, you can put them onto any troop type and you still get the benefit from the health boost. But I think that moving in on one troop type first is probably a good way to go. And then from there, maybe spreading around to a commander like Boudicca, which is something I probably will be getting a look at. And as a little teaser, I know that the developers recently said they're adding, I think it's 12 iconic crystals that you can get um, from new quests. I do wonder, there are uh, six KVK craftables that you can get, right? There's three weapons and then three helmets. I wonder if you get an iconic crystal simply for uh, having crafted one of each of those. And then there's an Iconic Crystal that you get for having a Talented one of each of those. That That's 12 total Iconic Crystals, 12 achievements. I don't know, just throwing it out there. The final thing that I want to point out as just a small optimization you've probably already considered is that you should go to your Commander tab, and if you find Boudicca Prime is the thing getting hit a lot, then go and give the Health and also the Health Defense Boost from Nighthead and Iron Guard to your Boudicca Prime March. Pick the Primary and pick the Secondary. And that's a small amount of extra stats. You also, of course, can go for a more defensive rune. Ideally, it will be health. And last but not least, the city theme is yet another way that you can go and get a little bit more tankiness. Right now, actually, um, I've got a debuff to my archers. But if I felt like for some reason I urgently only cared about my archers, I'd want to go pick a theme like this, which is not what I want to do for this account with three infantry marches, but you get the idea. Lastly, I keep coming up with things you can do. Um, you can also use a defense token. You should probably be doing that anyways. 
because defense is the better token to run in Season of Conquest, KVK4 and beyond, but use that defense token. Ideally, it's 10%, but 5% is totally fine. God, there's so many things these days that you can do to make a march more survivable. It's actually fairly surprising. There is one last thing I want to talk about, which is what other marches are you bringing to the field? And I personally, for example, use a Trajan with Athelflaed. But at this point, I already have a health debuff that's better from my CPO. I have a defense debuff that's better from my Nevsky. I don't know if I care all that much about the attack debuff. I mean, one final option to make a, another march in your murder ball more survivable is to have marches that do some buffs. So I don't think I would do this because my Mulan is not expertise. But one final option to make another march in your murder ball more survivable is to have a commander that will buff your other marches. Joan of Arc does this, and Mulan does this as well, although. Joan of Arc actually only buffs, I think, attack for archers, so that's probably not where you'd want to be. But when expertise, Mulan is giving you 20% of each stat, uh, and it's for three seconds. I mean, it's not that long, but three seconds with 40% of extra defensive stats, that's 20% defense, 20% health, that's kind of nice, right? I'm mentioning it because there are ways that you can protect your march. Um, I, I don't think I would recommend Constantine for the open field, but just to prove the point, Constantine would reduce the damage taken by 10%. Uh, you could have some other marches buffing your nearby marches if you find that they're getting completely focused out. So the sort of two strategies for protecting a march, technically three, um, are going to be making it more tanky, running it away, so having the march speed to escape, um, or having your other marches be so powerful that they can protect the march by doing lots of damage to the enemy. So you get wrecked, but they get wrecked too. Um, and the opposite of that would be using like Richard I and Charles Martel, and you can't protect your Boudicca Prime at all because that march will get ignored and do nothing. Although technically they reduce damage taken by 30%, but that's neither here nor there. For those that wanted to see my Boudicca Prime talents, here they are, and I'm going to be running these, and I don't think I can imagine a world in which I would change them. If you're looking for more detailed guidance about Boudicca Prime, I made a dedicated video. Card will appear right over here in just a second. Consider checking that out, or if you want to see what the best of the best players are using, I've been live streaming the KVK with 1960 and 307 and 302. Card will be up in the top over here in just a second. You can go check that one out for some KVK coverage. Just get a look at what they're using in the field.